So now we are going to take the last uh, step on our progress uh, through this session, and we are going back to one of the uh, specific points linked to uh, Joseph. We've um, mentioned uh, a number, the uh, attempted seduction on the part of uh, Potiphar's husband, and then Joseph as a statesman, and now we're going to move to the interpretation of dreams, which is another uh, characterizing aspect in Joseph. We know that in the scriptures, Joseph is not the only person to have this gift of uh, interpreting dreams. Another important uh, figure in the Old Testament is Daniel. So uh, we could compare these two figures to uh, derive their similarities and also uh, examine their differences. We've entrusted this task to Professor Piero Stefani, who is currently uh, lecturer at the Theological Faculty of Northern Italy in uh, Milan, a visiting professor at our higher institute uh, for religious studies um, here in uh, Rimini and in the Diocese of Montefeltro, he's uh, certainly someone who uh, many of you know. And for years, he's been part of the SAE, Secretary for Secretary for Ecumenic Activities, a member of the um, uh, Biblia Association, this uh, lay Catholic Culture Association, and his uh, bibliography is um, very plentiful. Uh, among uh, books published, uh, presentations in uh, conferences or essays, um, um, editorial uh, commentaries and um, pieces in journals. He also uh, is uh, someone who uh, takes part in a radio program, Radio 3, um, Men and Prophets, and his uh, Professor Stephanie has uh, explored in uh, recent years the complex relationship between Judaism and uh, Christianity, Christianity, between Christian uh, thought and also modern secular thought. So, with this, we give him the floor. And here again, I apologize for a presentation which uh, really uh, cannot do justice to uh, all the works um, which uh, our speaker has produced. But I really thank him for having accepted our invitation. And it's also an honor for us to have him as a speaker. So uh, we can now uh, sit down and listen to his words. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I made some uh, cuts and I informed, the I informed this and I hope I'll be able to uh, keep the time. Um, I just want to state to start that I'll be uh, touching on the topic of uh, providence and uh, human action, and uh, with an answer, I'm going to be presenting this uh, to Professor Calabi uh, because uh, my ignorance of Philo is uh, uh, much greater, I'm sure, than uh, the speaker who preceded me. So I'll be reading this uh, presentation, which I've cut down a little. I usually 
uh, speak uh, off the cuff, but uh, to keep the time, I'll be reading. Thank you for your patience. The most classic hermeneutical principle connected with the reading of the scriptures is that the Bible can be interpreted with the Bible. Uh, comparing means capturing similarities and differences. There's no exception in the conference, but the two most famous interpreters of dreams present in the Jew Jewish Bible, Joseph and Daniel. Obviously, uh, for the the second, uh, the uh, in the second part of the Kanach and the dreams of uh, Babylon written in Aramaic, but uh, we won't dwell on this. The similarities between the two cases are many. Two foreign kings, the pharaoh and um, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, have a dream. Their content concerns the destiny of their kingdoms. The spirit of both uh, is uh, troubled by them. In both cases, the officials, the officials responsible for interpretation are unable to uh, um, unravel the dreams, and therefore it's necessary to turn to the young Jews. Both Joseph and Daniel say that the dream is only deciphered thanks to God. However, there are considerable differences too. In Daniel, the image of the statue made up of diverse materials which degrade from the head to the feet represents a succession of kingdoms and eras which uh, will finally uh, experience a drastic inversion when the manufacture will be struck by a stone which falls from a mountain without any human human intervention. The time spans are long and the dream is interpreted um, in uh, the key of a kind of apocalyptical determinism. Uh, this thing will happen with no doubt. In Joseph, the time is shorter, the seven years of fat and lean cows and thin and full ears open the way to an active response. The interpretation leads to policy decisions. The meaning of the dream rather than an objective datum is the fruit of its own interpretation. There is, however, another major difference. The story of uh, Joseph begins with dreams uh, dreamt in the first person by the protagonist, and that of Daniel does not. Joseph is a dreamer of his own and an interpreter of other people's dreams. Daniel is only an interpreter of other people's dreams. Joseph's dreams. Joseph's story begins by uh, uh, the description of the uh, gr great uh, predilection Jacob has for his um, first of the two sons um, delivered by Rachel. Uh, immediately afterwards, the two dreams from Joseph are described. Uh, the first is that the sheaves of grain, and the second that of the moon and the 11 stars. In both cases, the biblical text does not uh, uh, um, provide any problems of interpretation. The people listening to the story understand understand the symbology directly, the reference to the sheaves which bow down to Joseph's, one aroused the hatred of his brothers, the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars who bow between, uh, bow to Rachel's first uh, son, um, trigger a um, Jacob's um, negative reaction to that. Philo, in the case of the sheaf, said that the brothers were um, very acute and grasped the meaning immediately. In With the case of the stars, things are more uh, complex. On the one hand, Jacob 
uh, keeps this story uh, of the dream to himself uh, in order to avoid any um, problems being uh, generated. In any case, what is uh, feared refers to the family. Philo uh, does not seem to grasp one difficulty, which uh, Genesis also uh, avoids at the end of the story when the brothers will find uh, Joseph again, who is uh, Viceroy of Egypt. It simply said they bow down according to an ancient custom. In this way, they confirmed his dreams. The reference to Genesis 42.6. The dream referring to the stars, however, uh, contains one missing thing. The moon refers to his mother, Rachel, however, died in giving light to Benjamin. The presence of the 11 stars and the moon therefore have an unresolved tension between them. Modern critical uh, spirits uh, as usual, refer to a plurality of sources. However, in ancient times, there was a different approach. Judaic hermeneutics, which uh, always paid attention to superficial irregularities, grasp the difficulty immediately. The various uh, answers were given. Uh, the main, there were two main uh, approaches. One was what we call concordist and the other more uh, freer. The Midrash, Bereshit et Rabbah, uh, uh, often mentioned, said that after Rachel's death, her place was taken by her slave, Bila, who loved Joseph like a son. On the other hand, the Talmud, in reference to this same passage, uh, records Rabbi Berekia's opinion that even when dreams um, come true, this un always uh, only happens in part. The uh, dreams are always partial in the way they turn out. So in this uh, case, there's a, some area of indeterminacy. Philo uh, identifies something which is uh, essential for the statesman, which is mastering rhetorics. Uh, the first example provided is uh, the ability to uh, interpret dreams. Uh, other more unpredictable uh, things, uh, facility of speech in meetings and the force of persuasion which derives from this. The public uh, position of uh, political action by definition does not touch on the personal component. Uh, with regard to his own dreams, Joseph is not a master of uh, speech. He only knows how to tell them, and apparently he does this to his own damage. Uh, so it appears that he does not know how to interpret them. The term God uh, reoccurs uh, in not many times in the De Josepho. In most cases, in any case, it's linked to dreams. In uh, the dream sphere, the providential will of God is um, indicated, even though not always recognized. Uh, what is said in relation to the lack of gratitude of the cupbearer of the Pharaoh is um, applies on a, a larger in a larger circumference which perhaps occurred because this happened because God in his providence decided that the uh, happy events should not derive uh, for the young person from a man rather than from him himself. This um, understood radically means that there are 
dreams which in order to come true do not imply any deliberate action triggered by their interpretation. Joseph's brothers uh, immediately understand the meaning of the dream and yet they act exactly against it to prevent it to coming true. Uh, faced of this heterogenesis of uh, ends many centuries later a German uh, philosopher would have spoken of the cunning of reason as in Hegel the issue is that the sense of events can only be understood later if on the other hand, it is known beforehand, everything changes. There's one thing is uh, if the interpretation of the dream is followed by action, and another is if uh, the um, fabric of the dream is only revealed later. So uh, the interpretation of dreams is uh, political. Philo explicitly uh, suggests a link between interpretation of dreams and uh, politics, but he does this in relation to daytime dreams, not nighttime dreams. He says, paragraph 143, since uh, the life is full of so many troubles and uncertainties, the political man has to step forward as a wise interpreter of dreams and analyze daytime daydreams and the phantasms of those who believe they are awake. However, those of the pharaoh are uh, nighttime dreams. But if uh, but once deciphered, they give rise to a, a dy dynamic which is essentially political. In the case of Joseph, it was the interpretation of the pharaoh's dream which led to the political fact. The, uh, political action is the result of an active reading of what is about to occur. Here, it is the understanding which establishes the modes of action. Philo uh, puts uh, the following sentence into Joseph's mouth, spoken to the Pharaoh. God has forewarned you of everything he is about to do in the country. Naturally, the uh, years of good and bad harvests are presented as objective data. However, it's only the explanation of the dream which uh, makes uh, Egypt, um, Egypt's uh, destiny different from those of the neighboring countries. Uh, here we could repeat that all dreams follow the mouth, which is a Talmudic uh, principle. All uh, dreams depend on their interpretation, that is. Joseph is a political man because he, not God, identifies the ways in which it is necessary to act in the fat years and the lean years. At the end of the story, when he uh, turns to his brothers, he states that the action of God transformed their evil um, intentions into good, but he also claims a role for himself. The Viceroy, even when he understands the mysterious actions of God, uh, emphasizes his own action too. And it is in fact here that he pronounces says, I, I and solemnly, I shall provide for you and for your dependents. Uh, Genesis 50, 21. The cows, whether they be fat or lean, um, come from the Nile. The reference is uh, relevant. So I'll skip my references to uh, Egyptian literature, but it's clear that uh, the Bible puts God in the place of the Nile. When this when it comes to putting um, these um, results into practice, there are different uh, interpretations of the Bible. One is uh, more concise and mild, and the other is more uh, troubling. One says that uh, Joseph if opened the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians and then to those who came from other countries too. 
Thaler follows this uh, initial version. But uh, in the second case, the picture painted is very different. Here it says that Joseph sold the grain, but the famine continued and the grain reserves ran out and so uh, subjects were asked to give their provide their livestock and uh, there was another lean year next year and uh, so they lost their money now they'd already lo they lost their livestock too people to continue to live are willing to uh, be put into slavery or to uh, give away their land joseph uh, refused the first proposal but he accepted the second uh, the whole earth, therefore, became property of the Pharaoh, apart from the lands of the priests. The measure adopted by Joseph is usually alien to the Bible and expresses a state-oriented conception that is normally, as I said, alien to the Bible. There are various hypotheses uh, which have been made, including the one identifying in this page the presence of an anti-monarchical line found elsewhere. For example, where it is uh, stated that the right uh, mishpat of the king allows him to confiscate fields, vineyards, and olive groves, or at least to tax them in favor of his uh, ministers. Uh, Samuel 8. However, there is also an opposite interpretation according to which the biblical text is uh, meant to convey a given admiration for a fiscally non-exaggerated intervention capable of uh, saving the nation from economic disaster, and that is uh, the line adopted by Thomas Mann, but with this respect I cannot uh, definitely dwell upon. And here I switch to Daniel, Daniel and the dream of the king of Babylon. With respect to the interpretation of the dream of the king of Babylon, Arnaldo Movigliano made a general assessment whereby the universal history has become one of the most problematic elements of our dual Greek and Jewish heritage. The decaying and decadent succession of world empires as well as its quadripartite scheme derived from Greece. But the messianic stone that comes off the mountain, definitely not by human hand, comes from the people of Israel. Taking this into account, Momigliano identifies uh, the primitive author of this text in a Jew of the uh, second half of the third century BC, who expresses in a symbolic form uh, the doctrine of the four monarchies, reinterpreting them in an apo apocalyptic sense. The fifth kingdom would soon come, and it would be that of God. This idea was then later taken up again and deepened in the Maccabean period, 2nd century BC. Beyond the hypothetical chronological attributions regarding the formation and the editing of the text, what is important in Momigliano's uh, observation is that the Greek-Hebrew crossbreeding documented in the Judaic Hellenistic culture was already present in the uh, book of Daniel. Now, we must now take a closer look at the passage, the one of the statue and the different elements. But now let me switch to the interpretation. And the different uh, is that uh, the king, Nabucodonosor, asks the interpreters to uh, narrate the dream. He is not unveiling it. So if you can understand what is the dream that's been made and no psychoanalyst could be capable of interpreting it just out of the subject and the author to interpret then you are in the conditions of granting the interpretation and allowing so you can understand what the other has been dreaming so this is what happens through the work of God and so the interpretation is the one given by Daniel 
you were given the power and the strength and the glory by the king of heavens. You are, O king, you saw a statue, a very large, exceedingly bright one that's going to dominate the world, and then there will be a fourth kingdom as hard as iron, and that kingdom will be crushing everything. And as you can see, the fingers and the foot were made of clay and part made of iron. That means that the kingdom will be parted, will be split. It will be as hard as iron, but also as uh, fragile as clay. So one part of the kingdom is going to be strong and the other one will be weak. And at the time of these kings, the God of heavens will allow for a kingdom which will never be destroyed and will never be uh, passed on to any other people. And thus, it shall break in pieces all of these kingdoms and put an end to them and shall stand forever. This kingdom will stand forever. So that is the meaning of the stone you saw coming down from the mountain without a hand being put on it. Uh, that was on Daniel 38, 45. And now let me switch to the conclusions. So we are faced uh, with a text that is capital for establishing the grammar and the relationship between political power and messianic history. Um, it uh, envisages a story of decadence and successive replacements represented by the four increasingly less noble parts of the state statue. And in the end, everything is abruptly and suddenly changed by the arrival of that messianic stone, which destroys the statue and creates then an immense mountain. In this dream and in its interpretation, we are presented with an inexorable historical decadence, as well as a strong sense of uh, otherness linked to what breaks in from outside, that is the stone. The mountain is not the result of any gradual progression. On the contrary, it rises suddenly after the equally sudden destruction of the entire statue, and not only of its feet, that is the chronologically most recent parts, destruction by the stone. So the stone destroys and crushes the entire statue. And the various metals in, are pointing at a chronological su succession, while the impact provoked by the stone changes the overall meaning and sense of the entire event, which is symbolized here. The fact that the detachment of the stone occurs without any human intervention shows that everything has already been written and that uh, the human action does not help to determine its outcome. Daniel, unlike Joseph, is not a politician, a statesman, nor does his interpretation open up any role for political action. Joseph, as the interpreter of dreams, was interpreted in a political key by Philo. It is an option which in the 1900 would have found many followers, included Thomas Mann. Daniel does not allow for any interpretation towards a political action which is specific. And in the case of the dreams, we know that there are some 14 years gone by, whilst in Daniel, the epochs are much longer. From the historical point of view, there is a dilation. And also from the political point of view, they are not uh, uh, to be faced with. But the dream of the king of Babylon can only be interpreted on the basis of an apocalyptic uh, conception, which uh, consider history where the human action is not uh, capable of changing the plot that was previously written by God. But in the one of Joseph, the providence and the human action in the horizons of politics are closely intertwined.
thank you for your attention. And I would say that with this, we have almost come to the end of the day, which is uh, a good news because today we don't have any statues destroying uh, political life. So many thanks, many thanks, uh, because you were presenting us with uh, an investigation uh, and a confrontation of these two figures, which was highly stimulating, very deep indeed which allows for many reading keys. Now, obviously, you did limit your contribution, because as you said, in the original manuscript that you sent, there were many more episodes and stimuli and inputs. Now, we now have some 10 minutes to devote to questions so that we may come to the conclusions shortly before 7 p.m. And here again, for those who wish to ask questions or ask for clarifications or make side comments, please do so. La prenotazione è d'obbligo. Remember to poi eh, esprimere la propria domanda. Click on the hand to ask for the microphone. Well, I think that uh, we are considering the weakest part, uh, the feet, uh, the clay feet. At this point, I would rather take advantage of this opportunity. That means that if the parallel that was uh, traced by you with the theories of the uh, successive uh, generations uh, and the rotation of the generations as they are represented uh, by Daniel and then uh, partially also present in other classic texts. And here I am uh, referring to the judgment of Movigliano that was referred. And if this kind of comparison could be also extended to the theme of the interpretation of dreams, whereby the dream can be read and uh, understood even before being dreamt. So maybe this could stand as a moment of uh, understanding whereby we could look at it from a more Mediterranean dimension. I wouldn't know how to answer to this uh, request of making a comparison. Uh, even from the religious point of view. But by and large, I would say that the main point seems to be, from the hermeneutic and interpretative point of view, seems to be the following. That is, what is the importance, uh, or where is the importance of interpretation with, as opposed to the action on the one side? Well, we know, and here I would like to try and elaborate a little bit on this aspect. So there was a hint made to the dream following the mouth. Well, there the point is that if someone says, I dreamt something, and then uh, he asks uh, some uh, wise men to interpret them, well, all of the wise men will give their own interpretation, and so far, so good. The same applies to psychoanalysts. But here, the point is whether everyone was uh, fulfilled. What does that mean? It means that if you're being guided by the interpretation, then the interpretation comes true. 
it will be implemented. But the opposite side uh, reveals a different uh, interpretation, which is rather more apocalyptic, whereby there is a where is the there is the foreseeing of what has already been established which is totally different from being announced or pre-announced and so here comes the problem of the timing the timing is fundamental joseph is uh, working on seven years uh, whilst the daniel has a different horizon the one of the empires uh, of the time and the interpretation brings in the Syriac, uh, the Greek Syriac system, the Greek Roman system. And the problem seems to be the one of knowing where and if these uh, epochs whereby there was a succession and decay and decadence which is uh, only connected to a given past or whether this also pertains to the future. But obviously the Christian reading, I am uh, trying to be quick, but the, the reading, the Christian reading says that the stone that came off from the mountain with no human intervention is obviously the uh, Christologic reading. It refers to a Christologic reading. Now, is it truly so, or is there a prophecy? The Roman system, uh, which uh, extends uh, to the following empire, is uh, the emanation into the future. Maybe I was sort of confused, but let me try and uh, recapitulate by saying that uh, something is one thing is uh, the interpretation of the dream which is instrumental to indicating an action whether yours or conducted by someone else and something totally different is instead to say that such a vast area pertaining to the divine plane and the divine sphere, which uh, is also bringing in the inevitability of decadence. And here we see the example of uh, the outside stone, which is creating a messianic reality, that whereby there seems to be an interruption of the history. So on the one side we see politics, and on the other we see the theology of the of history and of the story itself. So, many thanks for this uh, further contribution, which is to be added to the already very rich presentation that was offered by the speaker. It is by now 10 to 7, and I would say the time has come to draw the conclusions. Uh, I don't know whether there are any other questions, but otherwise, if there are none, I would rather switch to the conclusions. There is someone who is asking for the floor. I think that he has to unmute the mic. Yes, I did it. I would like to ask to our speaker if Joseph had a political instruction because he's so good in guiding his people in such a difficult uh, situation and then whether he had any instructions uh, allowing him to interpret the dreams. Uh, did he have any uh, specific instructions in his uh, youth? Well, according to the narrations, uh, we can only consider the narrations and the comments, and we can't go any further. Behind the narration, there seems to be nothing for us to grasp. Now, according to the narration, and this belongs to your second question, I tried to present uh, my own hypothesis. Joseph 
is not capable of interpreting his own dreams. Cannot. He cannot because he is narrating them. That's the reason why. And he narrates them to his own detriment. And other people do understand this immediately. So I wouldn't say that there is a school behind him. That means that uh, in the narration of both the text and the comments, uh, he was guided and he is guided by God. So it is God that allows him to interpret them. So the dreamer proved his inadequacy, inability, and in, inability to interpret the dreams. So this, I believe, is the hypothesis I can suggest with respect to the political action. That is the action depending on the interpretation of the dreams. Here, well, there are some variations. There are two currents within the different chapters of the Genesis, which seem to be different. One is rather more philanthropic, maybe it's inadequate, and the other one is more state-oriented. So one tells us, let's redistribute them and let's uh, put them together. Uh, so the state is definitely a state that intervenes, but that it's not enriching its own power. The other one is a state which, through some help, is capable of affirming itself. It seizes the lands, even the ones of the priests, and that's a form of taxation, which was rather moderate in the Near East. But again, that has sort of a state-oriented approach. So which one of the two could be seen as the true Joseph? Where did he learn such way of conducting his own policy? And here, when considering the creation of the discourse, we have to look at the historical approach whereby the Jewish community including Jerome, is looking for the shalom of uh, the country because out of the country well-being, the personal well-being will depend, and which is what in the end is going to be against and contrary to the one of the Pharaoh, whereby there is uh, the beginning of the Exodus. This is how it is to be seen. So the Pharaoh that had not been knowing Joseph. So here we see the end of the collaborative model. That is where we have to see this. Bene. Now, very well, and thank you for this last uh, contribution. And here again, we did receive a clear and well-articulated answer. And uh, there were also many other stimuli. Now, having said this, I would uh, switch to the true conclusion of this uh, first uh, session. A session very rich indeed, very deep as well. We cannot conclude it without the appropriate thanks, the very much due thanks for those who were working behind the scenes so as to allow for this meeting to occur. So the technical staff in the Gregorian University, for many thanks to those who were translating translating simultaneously all of our contributions, because that is what made them understood and that allowed for the richness of this afternoon. Thank you as well to Professor Gargiulio, who stepped in, uh, in uh, a very timely manner when I was met by some technical difficulties. And thanks to those who made it possible for me not to 
experience them anymore. So again, many thanks uh, to the four speakers, Ludovica De Luca, Mauro Perani, Valentina Marchetto, Piero Stefani, who were offering us many stimuli with respect and as regards the work of Philo, many inputs uh, that allowed us to have different readings and to look at uh, such a multifaceted uh, figure such as uh, the one of Philo is. Uh, many thanks to all of you the participants and uh, we had initially some 204 connections uh, and uh, we are now ending with 178 so i will see you tomorrow for the second session beginning at uh, four o'clock 4 p.m not at uh, 3 30 p.m as the program says and the link is not going to be the same as today, not the one you use today. And the link has been sent already to all of those who uh, have expressed their willingness to participate. I believe and I hope that I haven't forgotten anyone or anything, and I now wish you a pleasant evening and give you an appointment to tomorrow. Again, looking at the figure of Philo and uh, putting the focus onto the interreligious dialogue. Many thanks to all of you.